Hey everybody, welcome back to our series on the changing standards. I'm Mike Bloom, this is Russ. We are from Eagle Force, and uh, if this is your first time joining us, we're a few episodes into this now. Uh, in our previous episode, we discussed why the standards are changing. If you missed that one, I recommend definitely go back, check it out. Um, it, it's interesting to see where they're going with this. Uh, we talked about, should we dive right into it and look at all these individual changes? And uh, what we talk about there is that first we want to get a, a look at what we call the whole elephant. We don't want to look at the little snapshots mm -hmm. of it. We want to see this bigger picture. And as we will get to those individual changes, I promise. Mm -hmm. And as, as exciting or you know as salient as those points are, it's maybe important. Not, maybe not exciting. <laughs> well, <laughs> depending. Uh, there's a couple key concepts that we gotta we gotta establish up front so you can really understand. Uh, why they are making these changes and and really get a better feel for what this is going to mean right. uh, for you. So, so I brought an elephant. And, oh, um, great! <clears throat> no, film crew's scowling at me, so I'll move <laughs> on. Actually, the so what we want to talk about is the, the the standard today, and and but as as most of you know, the standard is revised every seven to eight years. And historically, what we've seen is. Every other revision is a major revision, and then they kind of tweak it in between. So they, the, if you look at the 2008 standard, um, it was pretty minor. 2000 standard was major. Well, this standard, again, is, is back to the major. So this has been a major revision, and I know many of the folks watching this are upper-level standards with aerospace and automotive. So the fact that ISO, what we're talking about, that change is going to impact you because it's changing your standards too. But so the standard is major now and what they're looking for, looking at is the next change should be minor. So we've gone from eight clauses to 10 clauses. So your current numbering system is not gonna line up anymore. So, you know, the clauses do, are gonna be, have to align separately. I, uh... I know one thing that people are looking at this this expansion of the number of clauses. They're feeling that we're going to have to renumber our documents. We're going to have to make this thing line up, and you don't necessarily have to renumber them. It's just no, you you don't you don't have to renumber them. We have we have a lot of clients that never follow the numbering system in the first place. They they <laughs> they you have, you you they use the different method. So, but what I would suggest to you though is. The numbering system that you're currently using, if it aligns with the standard, which most people did, is never coming back. It's and the new numbering system is going to be good for the next 15, 16 years. Yeah, you're looking at that every other, every other revision being yeah. major thing. So, um, what we're talking about is you don't you don't have to revise the standard, and if you don't revise the standard, what you really want to be able to use is is, is a matrix, and a, and a matrix is going to basically list the clauses of the standard and, and, and where they can find them in, in your current system. Mm. Which do you recommend? Well, my, I don't want to frustrate the folks who are not using it, but I, my recommendation is you're, you're, the standard has changed enough, you're going to have to modify a lot of the procedures. So while you're doing it, you might as well just renumber the system. It's going to be good for the next 15 years or so. What I've seen organizations get wrapped around the axle is if they have some other numbering system trying to find where is the procedure for controlling non forming product, which you know is 8.3 in the standard, at least it was, where do you go to find the new one? So my recommendation is to just to renumber, yeah. renumber the Ultimately, it is, it, it is your decision on what you want to do. It's the organization's choice on, yes. on that matter. Yeah, absolutely. It's your choice. And again, what we've always said is you want to develop the system to make business sense to you. Mm -hmm. So don't align this thing for auditors or for anybody else, but align it for to make sense for you. So we want to take a look at some of the changes to the standard. And so what you're looking at is a, is, is a chart that shows, on the left-hand side, it shows you what the existing clauses were. On the right-hand side, the new clauses. So you, as you'll notice, the first three are never pretty much the same. There's some slight differences there. I mean, in the content, not, not the wording, uh, the titles. Um, 
And but you're no doubt doing what I did when I first took a look at it. You're looking at it, okay, what's changed? Why do we go from eight to ten, and what makes sense here? Yeah, th there are definitely are significant changes. Yeah. Uh, what what of that um, jumps out at you in the way this is kind of laid out? Well, I, guess, I guess the first thing that really jumps out at me is in is in as you know, you folks that are aerospace or automotive, clause four has been a You've been living in that thing, trying you know the process management, the whole process management approach. Well, now clause four is called context of the organization. You know, so you're scratching your head, wondering what is it? What is it <laughs> yeah. talking about? You know, well, relax. It's it's not too terribly different. I mean, I'm we'll cover the the details later, but mm -hmm. it it covers a lot of what you're already doing, but it does do some expansions on it. But what they're really stressing here is the process approach. Yeah, and we are primarily focusing on the uh, ISO 9001 changes, uh, but uh, what about the upper level changes? Uh, well, most of, I, I think most of the people watching, most of our clients, yeah. they're all upper, upper level certified. Yeah, and I, and I know we run the danger of you're, you're interested in these changes and you're saying, I'm not ISO. Well, you really are ISO, but you're aerospace and automotive on top of it. Mm -hmm. And any change to the ISO is being changed incorporated in a new standard. Yeah, all, all of ISO is embedded into each of these upper levels. Yeah, that's an excellent point. So history has shown that the, um, the upper level certifications, they have focused like a laser on Clause 4. So you can bet these revisions to context of the organization, they're going to be focusing on this thing mm -hmm. and, when, and the way they look audit you and the way they're looking at how this is implemented. Yeah. Um, the new AS standards, of course, are coming out now, but the TS standards should be out by the end of the year. But, but back to our chart, if you'll notice, one, two, and three are basically the same with some minor revisions. You got clause four, it's the same, it's close, but it's expanded. And again, we'll cover this in, in some depth in a, a later time. Great. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us for today. Uh, next week, we are going to Take a look at how they got 10 clauses out of the eight, go into some depth on that. It's pretty interesting. Um, one thing that we say in every one of these episodes, we want this to be a show that you can interact with. Right. So we know you got questions on what these changes mean for you guys, your organization. Please ask us. We would love to answer them right here on the show. Some other things we'd like to have is as, as we go down the road here, you guys got some ideas on how to do this, and we can use, I mean... Yeah. Any feedback that you have, any input, we want to make this a community experience, and so we welcome that. You can uh, email us, uh, you can contact us on our website, and uh, we'll, we'd love to hear from you. So join us in a, a week. A note in a bottle for work? A note in a, well, if you want it to be in this year's episodes, probably not the bottle. Uh, but yeah, just uh, we will see you in a week, and we will talk about those clauses. 